Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about the horizontal, the vertical, and the perpendicular constraints. Uh, like always, let's get started with a sketch. We'll start on that top plane. Shift S to start a sketch. Letter N to normalize. Letter P to hide those planes. Um, so if you follow me up here, you'll see that today, like I said, horizontal, vertical, and perpendicular. Uh, I really wish parallel and perpendicular were closer to each other, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so for starters, horizontal, if we hover over that, you'll see it, the symbol is a horizontal line, uh, and it constrains one or more lines or a set of points to be horizontal. Uh, we access that by pressing letter H. Uh, vertical, we'll hover over that, same thing. Uh, letter V is our hotkey for that. Constrain one or more lines or a set of points to be vertical. So they're the same exact constraint, just in different uh, orientations. So one is along the x-axis, one is along the y-axis. Um, or z-axis, I guess, depending on which plane you happen to be on. Because we're on the top, that's kind of where it's going to go. And like if we hover over perpendicular, that shortcut key is going to be a two-button press. Uh, you're going to hold down shift on the keyboard and the letter L. And what that's going to do is make two lines perpendicular to one another. Um, so for starters, can't do any of this without any geometry. So let's start with some lines. So biggest thing to make sure is that you just draw some lines out into space that are not already uh, horizontal or vertical. So I have some lines out here. We'll go some bigger ones. And first thing we're going to do is that horizontal constraint. So we know that right now, just looking at these, none of these are horizontal at all. Uh, so what can I do? A couple of ways to do this. I can click the letter H to start with that horizontal key and then click a line and it will move horizontal. I can click the line first and then press the letter H and that will make it horizontal. I can uh, click three lines, select three of those lines, press the letter H and make it horizontal. Um, if I'm in that horizontal line tool, we'll turn that guy on and I click each line, I don't have to exit out. And as I do it, every line I click will then turn horizontal. So a couple of ways to go about doing that. Fairly simple. Um, a lot of times, if you have paid attention thus far, you don't really need the horizontal line constraint unless you're shifting something to a horizontal line. Um, the easiest way to make a line horizontal is from the get-go when you first start and you're drawing that line. Notice as I move my mouse around, come in a little closer, as I move around, you'll see that yellow line start to track, right? Um, and it does this for vertical as well. So if I hover over the right side of my origin, you'll see that I get that dotted yellow line and that gives me that horizontal constraint next to it. So if I click on my origin to start and then I go out, I have a dotted yellow line because it wants to make it horizontal. Easiest way to make a line horizontal is to start by drawing it horizontal. So uh, same thing with vertical. If I were to go in the vertical direction, you'll see I will get pretty close to straight. But if I move over to the left, it'll snap to that and you'll see that, that little black line will pop up. So again, if I go down towards horizontal, get really close to zero, and it'll snap at that horizontal line right there. Easiest way to make a horizontal line is doing it like that. And by doing so, I now have saved myself some clicks. I don't have to go back and then tell that line it now needs to be horizontal. Um, but if you're trying to learn these constraints, this is how you would go about doing it, okay? So I'm gonna delete that line. So let's move on to vertical. Let's start with some lines that are almost vertical, but aren't quite there. We can even make a couple that are almost horizontal. So here we go. Okay, just like before, I'm gonna press the letter V and click my line. Click my line like I did before. I'm gonna escape out of that. Uh, click a couple of lines, press the letter V. And you'll notice that it doesn't like that because one of them tracked as perpendicular. So if I delete that constraint, that's tying everything up, that perpendicular constraint, it'll fix what we got going. I want this one to be vertical as well. And you know what, while I'm at it, I'm gonna change these two and make them horizontal instead of vertical. 
you'll see now we have our geometry the way we need it. And right now, literally, we're just spinning lines around, moving them where we need it to be. But before I did these two, there's a couple of ways you can do some things as well. Um, so let's say that this line was horizontal instead of vertical, okay? Instead of clicking the lines and making them horizontal or vertical, I can click the points. So if I want this point and this point to be vertical to one another, I can do that. And it'll keep that geometry roughly, but now these two exist. If I were to draw a line between the two as a construction line, you will see they are vertical and that line passes through one another, okay? So if I were to move this, it's almost like it's a, a coincident, but it's gonna be moving along that line forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's always going to, this point is always going to be in a vertical um, relationship to this point right here. I cannot go left and right. Where if you take these ones, these are vertical, but they're not attached or constrained to anything else. So if I were to say, same idea, this point and this point need to be horizontal to one another. You'll see it moved it out here. I can now move this any way I want this way but it's still locked in on this line at a horizontal on that, that, that plane right there. Um, so if I were to then move this, what's gonna happen? It's gonna extend it and things are gonna change and geometry is gonna move according to whatever I do, okay? So these are some relationships you can throw in place. Just remember that when we're doing horizontal or vertical, that points can also be uh, given that constraint, not just the lines. Let's go ahead and delete all these guys. Start with some fresh lines and get them going out uh, this way. Okay. Now we gotta talk perpendicular, okay? Most people, when we think perpendicular, we're gonna zoom in, they think perpendicular has to be a 90, which it does, but it's only like this. So a horizontal line to a vertical line, right? We have these like that. And they'd be right. And if you look, we have these uh, uh, coincident constraints, but by default, because a horizontal goes into a vertical, I try to add a perpendicular constraint here to here, it already exists. So it kind of gets, let's turn those constraints on. It's gonna throw it there, but it's it's kind of not necessary, okay? I can add one here, I can add one here. It's all there, but it's not really necessary. Why would I need to use this? Well, let's say I have this line and let's make it fully defined. So I'm gonna say that this needs to be a specific distance away and this needs to be a certain dimension and this is there so we're 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 defined well i want this line and this line to now be perpendicular so now i would go in click that perpendicular button or press shift and l and you'll see that this if you hover over the constraint or you click the constraint, you'll see that they are perpendicular. Well, why isn't it touching? That's where our other constraints come into play. Things can be perpendicular, things can be parallel, things can be vertical, horizontal, whatever. And I think the problem we have is that when we think perpendicular, we think like that first example where they always have to touch, right? So in my mind, in a lot of people's minds, perpendicular, I can make these perpendicular to one another. So the angles, they're at a 90 degree angle from one another. If I were to check the dimension from here to here, it is gonna be a 90 and that's what perpendicular means, right? However, that doesn't always mean they're gonna to touch. It can have a relationship, but it doesn't need to be constrained in a way that we need it to. So I can go in and then coincide this to this. And now that looks a little more traditional than what we're used to, okay? Some cool things we can do with these uh, perpendicular constraints is now if I uh, were to tell this, I want this to be 
vertical, it's still perpendicular, it's still locked in, but now that piece moves with it. So it's kind of cool to uh, keep that geometry and keep those constraints. As you start building stuff, it starts kind of work a little bit better. Uh, so we get rid of that, let's delete that. One thing I wanna show you, um, some examples I let the kids do and my students do when we're learning this. Um, first thing I make them do is draw their name using, or their, their first letter, their first name, sorry, using only lines um, to get familiar with that line tool. And I tell them they can't just do it like this. So my name's Corey. Um, this doesn't work for me. That's not a letter C in my mind. It is, but I want a block letter. So think like um, Letterman jacket, you know, letter patches on your, on your jacket or a big block letter style. Typically something you'd see on like a jersey block letter style. So we're going to do letter C, but I want it to be blocks, right? So if I come in and I just kind of draw things and I'm freehanding, we'll go here, 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 here. And I'm drawing this shape, right? It gets the job done, but that's not exactly what I want. So I tell the kids now go back in and start using these constraints. So come in and think what should be vertical and what should not be. What should be horizontal? What should be perpendicular, right? So I know that this line, this line, this line, this line, those four all need to be horizontal constraints, okay? I know this one, this one, this one, and we'll go with that one. I will add that guy too. All need to be vertical constraints, okay? Um, I could probably get rid of that, coincide that. You know what, maybe we'll add another line back here. Wait for it to do its thing, okay. Now, these also need to be vertical. This one needs to be horizontal. And now I can start going and adding dimensions, right? I want these angles at a specific thing. I need the angles to equal each other. We can start adding dimensions. We can do a bunch of different stuff. Um, but biggest thing is now, now, wherever I move this to, things are gonna move accordingly. So these two points always need to be vertical to one another. These two points, or sorry, this point and this point should probably be horizontal to each other. Move that back down. So this point and this point also need to be horizontal. Oh, it's gonna break because of that midpoint. Let's get rid of that. So this point and this point horizontal. Let's move that back up. There we go. Put that back down. Move this in a little bit. There we go. So as we start playing with it, you'll see that it doesn't matter how I do this, the lines are constrained to one another. So if I say these two lines need to be equal and these two lines need to be equal, I can come in and play and make this work, right? So uh, I challenge you to do uh, something, whether it's a letter, number, whatever, draw some sort of shape and play with the constraints and watch what it'll do. You saw that sometimes when I do these, if I start moving stuff, it'll mess up that geometry real quick. I go from a letter C to some sort of weird uh, projection. It's all about how many points you have and how you how you went about setting it up. But now those are fully constrained. And if you wanna see these constraints, you can see uh, by clicking this box up here, all the different constraints that are on there. Um, word of caution, just be careful. Don't over constrain things. That's when it turns red and it doesn't like the drawing. It doesn't like what you're doing. Um, so our last little example, um, something I do, and I did this when I first started, draw a diamond using only lines, 
Try not to let any other constraints pop up. But now I want you to turn this diamond into a square or a rectangle, okay? Um, so first thing is, let's take these. We'll start with the perpendicular constraint. I want this and this to be perpendicular to one another. And I need this and this, this and this, and this and this, okay? Looking at those constraints, you'll see that everything is perpendicular and everything is um, coincident with one another. Um, if you hover over those constraints, you will see it'll tell you what relationship applies to what. So this constraint affects these two lines up here. This constraint affects those, right? You can hover over and it'll tell you what's what. So after I'm done with perpendicular, now I just need to tell it horizontal. I need this line to be a horizontal line. And you'll see by doing that, because we added those perpendicular constraints, everything is now matched to what it needs to be because it needs to be a 90, okay? Um, if I undo those perpendicular constraints, I could do this using horizontal and do it a lot more. So I could come in and say, hey, this needs to be horizontal and this needs to be horizontal. And you'll see it starts to change my geometry fairly quickly. And this also needs to be vertical and this needs to be vertical, okay? Um, then I could come in and give this a perpendicular constraint. I could do the same thing over here, here and here, and here and here, right? Um, and I end up with the same uh, geometry. So what's cool is there's a bunch of different ways to get to a, an endpoint, um, but it doesn't always necessarily, there's not a right or a wrong way. So whatever works for you, um, toy around with some geometry and watch what these constraints do. They affect things fairly, fairly easily, but fairly quickly. I've had students do some stuff with these constraints and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what I did. So what was the last thing you clicked? Undo it and don't do that again. Try it a different way. See if this is a way you, you're like, I'm, I'm trying to do this thing, but it won't let me get to this end product. Okay, well, try it a different way, right? The old saying, there's a million ways to skin a cat, just get it done. So, um, that's going to do it for us today. Um, next week, we will talk about the equals and the midpoint uh, constraint. This is week 16. We have 16 uh, individual videos now in this on shape orientation uh, playlist. I think it's going great. Uh, I've been having a lot of you guys reach out. Uh, again, these comments, I'm loving them. Keep them coming in. Ask for help. Ask for more tutorials. I'm working on some things. Um, possibly some merch opportunities in, ter uh, in terms of um, some things to help you guys get the ball rolling and some, some tutorial based things. So um, if that's something you might be interested in, like a one-on-one -on -one type class or um, just some basic tips and tricks, uh, you know, a Zoom call or something or a Google call, Google Meet call, uh, leave me a message or find me on Instagram. My email's in the, in the description. Um, leave a comment. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and uh, I will see you next week. You guys take care.